So I'm just guessing Hasib here, but I assume you're hodling rather than not. Uh, that is correct. We are we are definitely hodling. <laughs> I think you know, anybody who's looking at what crypto was doing last year was expecting that if and when interest rates rise, there's going to be a response in the total demand for crypto assets. Um, but I don't think I, I think looking at the effects of interest rates on crypto in the short term is very different from saying where do you think this asset class is going in the long term. Okay, so are we in for a winter that's just going to last a few months or a few years? Well, look. If, 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 if anybody knew in advance when winter was going to come or not going to come, then they'd be a lot richer than I am, unfortunately. Uh, the reality is that most people, when they try to call these things, they, they end up being quite wrong. There, there are some things that are really overhyped right now in the market, and there are some narratives that really need to prove themselves before they can really be uh, taken, you know, before they can justify the valuations that they have today. But it's very clear that there have been a lot of secular trends, most of which have been accelerated by COVID over the last two years, that crypto is really tapping into. And the, the, the hordes of institutional investors that have started to buy crypto over the last couple of years, um, most of them are not gonna go away just because the price has come down you know, 15, 20% from the highs. Um, you know, overall, within growth assets as a category, we've seen a broad pullback over the last six months, right? It's happened in traditional equities. And now that institutional investors both have exposure to traditional equities and to crypto, overall, when interest rates rise, there's a decreased demand for growth assets and uh, because people want to move into safer assets because they because they pay more. Uh, and that's what we're seeing right now happening in crypto. But it's, it's a far cry from saying that, okay, well, it's all over. Uh, it's definitely not all over, um, but it's just that the, the, the pricing of crypto is naturally associated with the pricing of other risk assets. Meantime, we're expecting rates to rise, potentially. That's impacting big tech. We're also expecting more regulation. Bloomberg reporting that the Biden administration might require uh, companies, crypto companies, to report customer data to the IRS. How do you think that's going to impact the broader market? I mean, in general, the, the, the regulation that we see coming to crypto is mostly what we expected, right? I don't think anybody who's in this space very long was expecting that it's going to be the Wild West forever. The, what, what I'm much more concerned about is not the kind of gradual march of, okay, you know, there's a tighter integration between exchanges and the IRS and people who are trading on centralized exchanges need to report their taxes. Like, of course, that's going to happen. Um, the real question I think that uh, is, is on my mind is, are we going to see any sudden changes in that regulatory story that are unanticipated? Right. So, you know, Gensler uh, at the SEC, he's been banging this drum for a while that he feels that, you know, crypto and DeFi on the whole is, you know, illegitimate and or, you know, everything in crypto is potentially a security. Uh, now, clearly, many people don't agree with him. Uh, even people within the, the administration don't agree with him. Uh, and certainly a lot of people, you know, a lot of people in Congress who ultimately are, are very likely going to be the ultimate determiners of how this stuff gets regulated. Um, but if we see a big shift in sentiment, whether it's on, you know, the, the status of many of these tokens, whether it's on the way in which DeFi protocols are going to be regulated, whether it's on, you know, the, the status of stable coins and whether or not stable coins can be treated the way they are today with any address anywhere owning a stable coin. If, any, if, we, if we see a secular shift in the regulatory approach in the U.S., uh, that's what has me more concerned than the more gradual stuff that you're talking about that I think um, one way or another was, was bound to happen eventually as this space became institutionalized. Andreessen Horowitz just raised $9 billion, a huge fundraise. Some of that will go toward crypto. And there does seem to be an oversupply of funds going into the crypto market. Is this efficient? And are you seeing it drive real innovation? Are you seeing it put towards really potentially useful products? 30 seconds. Yeah, so there's a, there's a barbell right now. You're seeing a lot of funds coming into the late stage, uh, you know, sort of growth investing, right? So you're seeing SoftBank, Co2, Tiger, you know, Andreessen, Paradigm. Um, and that's where a lot of this capital is going is in the very late stage investments, right? If you're raising a $3 billion plus fund, the only place you can really put it to work is in late stage uh, growth rounds. Um, you know, Dragonfly, we're much more early stage investors, and that's where we do our bread and butter. It's where we make most of our, uh, uh, you know, most of our really great investments. And in the early stage, I still see a ton of opportunity. There's so much, there's so many problems that need to get solved in crypto two to three years down the road before this stuff really attains mass adoption on the scale of hundreds of millions of users. And that's where I think the opportunity is still very ripe.